What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Beyond the Berm. Today we're going to be going over the Nikon Pro Staff 5 25 10 BDC reticle optic. So before we begin I want to say sorry about the change in scenery. I'm having a couple of lighting issues in my normal filming area that I have to sort out. I haven't gotten around to it so I'm making do with what I have. So let's get right into it. The Nikon Pro Staff 2.5 to 10 is actually pretty nice. Um, this is the Pro Staff 5 model. It is pretty feature packed for for what you're paying. Uh, I believe these are these hover right around $200, anywhere from 180 to 250, depending on when and where you get it. And you know it's a pretty solid optic, and I'm going to go over why. Right out of the box, it comes with these normal elastic bungee style scope caps nothing fancy there I really wish it had a set of actual flip caps but at this price point you can't be expecting too much I actually appreciate that they put the money into something else I have this set up in a normal Leupold mount nothing crazy there but I have to say for the money Nikon optics have been thoroughly impressing me the glass clarity is really good for the money Nikon being a camera company, they make photographic lenses, they, that's what they do, they, they're a glass company essentially. So that all translates into very good clarity for the money. Now I'm not saying that this by any means is Trigicon clear or Zeiss clear or anything along those lines because it, frankly it's not. You are paying 200, around $200, expect to get 200 to 300 dollar optic clarity and that's what you get the edge clarity when looking through the optic is pretty good I do notice a little bit of distortion on the edges but nothing I can't live with at this price point now get into the actual features of it it is a 2.5 to 10 variable power optic and the adjustment is decently smooth it's not too loose not too tight Get a little bit of, I, I guess you could say, grit to it, but it's smooth enough to where it's acceptable. And it also has this little, this little knob on it for like a built-in throw lever. Pretty nice little feature. One other feature that I really like is the actual focus. This thing has a crazy amount of focus, focal adjustment. Um, good, awesome, good on you, Nikon. That's pretty nice. Um, I usually keep it right around there. That's uh, I'll adjust it when I go back to the range. One other thing, you have capped scope turrets. Pretty nice. I prefer capped scope turrets. I like to set them and forget them for the most part. I tend to shoot the same ammos, but that's just me. Now you remove them. They are O-ring sealed. Nice little cap. And you will find quarter MOA adjustments pretty nice the actual clicks are perfectly positive I have no grapes on that whatsoever also you will notice that there's a little hex screw right up top and that will actually allow you to bring the rifle back to zero what you do is loosen that little hex screw lift up and you will be able to turn the dial without making any adjustments and then setting it back down to zero tighten it back up so if you ever do make any adjustments oh no nope just look at that bring it right back to zero done same thing goes for windage and elevation both the same features now at this point I'm going to be rolling in the BDC reticle what it is is essentially you have a crosshair with multiple circles that progress downward it is not by any means a precision style reticle I believe that this scope was designed to be a hunting style optic and that's 
just what it does. It is perfect for putting it right on target and hitting vital areas. That's what the actual reticle seems like it would be good for. I was shooting at around 200 yards the other day and you put the 200 yard zero or 200 yard reticle I should say on target and boom twangs the steel like it's nothing. Now I didn't know exactly where it was hitting within that circle. I found that when I was shooting 55 grain it was hitting towards the top of the circle. When I was shooting 77 grain it was hitting more towards the bottom of the circle. So what I'm going to say is know your ammo and know where it's going to hit and understand that certain bullets drop quicker than other bullets. 55 grain doesn't drop as quickly as heavier, slower bullets. But I will say overall, for the money, the Nikon Pro Staff 5 has, has been suiting this build pretty well. I've been able to obtain MOA accuracy regularly with this and good ammo. Cheap ammo does not equate to good accuracy. Cheap parts don't typically equate to good accuracy. But Nikon has absolutely been doing a very fine job at producing decently priced optics for the money. Now, I will say I have one gripe about this, and it is I zeroed the rifle in, I guess it was probably right around 60 degrees out. Fahrenheit and I took it out temperature dropped real quick as winter came we got some snow and it was right or hovering right around five degrees out I noticed a discernible impact shift with this optic I saw probably right around an MOA and a half to two MOA shift in point of impact compared to before and um, I don't really know what to think about that. That's uh, I'm not a fan of that. Say you zero your optic and you go take it out hunting and it happens to be 30 degrees out but you zeroed it in 80 degree weather, now your point of impact's off. I will be doing further testing with that to see if it just happened to be the lows I was using that were hitting a little bit to the right, but as of right now, I'm pretty certain that the optic itself has a little bit of a thermal shift to it. Uh, hovering right around that MOA, MOA and a half area. Now is that acceptable? Not particularly, but at this price point, what can you really expect? I don't expect this to be absolutely precise like a Swarovski or a high-end Trigicon or something along those lines. This is a 200 to $250 optic and it's going to perform like one. It just has better glass clarity than a $250 optic. That's about it. So, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to ask. I still will recommend this optic for somebody that's looking just to go out and shoot some groups with it. That's really all I see this good for at this moment. Um, I personally don't necessarily trust it to go out and go hunting with it. Because, you know, what if I go out in 80 degree weather? Is it going to shift the other way? Only time will tell with that one. I do plan on giving some updates. But... That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching Beyond the Burn. I really appreciate it. Make sure you support all the gun channels. Subscribe to all the gun channels, as long as you like their content. And make sure to check in for regular content. Thanks, guys.